CP and CPK. CPK. Okay. So we know the CP, CPK can be used if our data type is continuous. All of you agree with me? If the data type is continuous, that's the time we go think about CP and CPK. If it is probably we use uh, the DPMO or we simply go with the yield. But now the data type is continuous. So we need to understand our CP and CPK. Are we good at maintaining the cycle time? Or are we good at maintaining the turnaround time? Are we good at maintaining the diameter of the product or length of the product? So these are the situations where you can think about CP and CPK. But uh, the CP, CPK is actually, CP, CPK is actually a measure of a process capability that tells you how, how much capability your process has got. But you all have to understand one more thing that even though we have the capability, are we performing? That is also important. Am I right? Capability is different and then performance is different. What is important to your customer? The capability or the performance? Which is important to your performance? Performance. performance. Yeah. That means measuring CP and CPK will tell you how much capability your process has got in its current position. But what is that customer is going to experience? That is not understood. All of you agree with me on this? If I run this process, whatever is the capability, yes, that is really good. But what is that the customer is going to experience? So in order to, uh, that the capability cannot tell. So we need to uh, look at another set of tools known as PP and PPK. All of you are with me on this? PP and PPK. So the PP and PPK will talk about, will talk about the performance, uh, Sorry, performance, performance not, just, system. not just the capability. Hope first of all, everyone is you know uh, clear with respect to the difference between capability and the performance. Please confirm. Is that clear? It's a normal English. Yes, sir, sir, uh, to rephrase it, uh, capability is the potential, but performance is the actuals. Fantastic, fantastic. Capability is the potential, but performance is the actual. That is why CP and CPK are also known as a potential process capability and not the real process capability. We only call it as potential process capability. Very good. So, one moment. So, we'll uh, get into that. But number six. So process capability, we talk at step number six. Am I correct with my language, all of you? Process capability, we talk at step number six. So what is step number six? What is step number six in DMIC? Yeah, you have to be very, very, you uh, know. Me measure, the measure the baseline. Ah, measure the baseline performance, right? So that is your step number six. And that's where we are going to, that's where we are going to uh, do the, we are talk about the capability analysis. Now I'm showing uh, two cricket players on my screen. One is Shikhar Dhawan, the other one is Saurav Ganguly. Suppose if you have to, you want to play a match tomorrow, whom would you prefer out of the two? Suppose you want to, Include one of these batsmen in a cricket team, whom you would prefer to include? Current date, sir, is retired. Shikhar Dhawan. Shikhar Dhawan. So those of you who think, Ganguly, you are you are thinking in terms of the capability. But those of you who say Dhawan, you are thinking in terms of the actual performance. Do you understand? Which is important to you? Ganguly, I agree, is a great player. But then if you include him, you may not get what you expect, isn't it? Yes, sir. That is not the purpose in any business. So CP and CPK are like your Ganguly. But the PP and PPK 
or like Shigar Dhawan, Surya Kumar Yadav, and uh, you know Subman Gill, and who are actually helping you win matches, which is important. Winning matches sure. or keeping legends. Winning matches. Winning yeah, matches. Right. So if you understand this logic, hereafter you must start believing in your PPPPK and not just on CPCPK. You must you must start believing in. PPPPK and not just in the CP and CPK. Hope you are gaining some you know, clarity here, isn't it? Because the capability or even the performance depends on several factors. The performance depends on several factors. One is the duration of performance, isn't it? Always there is a factor called aging. Aging is not only applicable to human beings. It is also applicable to machineries. Agreed? So yes, by it, the capability will fall down. So it's it's a good idea to keep an eye on the performance sometimes instead of merely looking at the capability. Number one. And number two, even <laughs> though even though aging is not a problem, but the uh, what do you call the number of cycles of operation, you are very young. But then you have to work 24 bar 7. Now what happened? Your performance will go down. So you mm -hmm. need to consider these two things and then make a judgment. Which is a good idea? Can I look at the capability or can I look at the performance? Uh, but it is always a good idea. Without no, you know, the thumb rule is it is always a good idea to look at the performance. To look at the performance. Hope all of you agree with me. Right? One is aging, the time. The other one is the number of cycles of the operation, which is otherwise known as the demand. If the demand is too high, then there is no risk. 24 bar 7, bar 365. Then also performance can come down. Right? And when, the, when uh, you run a process for a longer time, then aging will come into play. Because of the aging and because of the demand, the variation will increase to a higher value. All of you agree? Right? Yes, sir. All agree, right? So, you, you try to measure the increased variation. The variation that may increase if all the factors start deteriorating. When you actually set up your process, nothing has deteriorated. Am I right? If you actually set up a process, the brand yes, new... Sir. A brand new process, nothing will deteriorate. You have a good control over everything. So whatever you measure, that can only reflect the capability of the process. That can only reflect the capability of the process. But if you run the same process for a longer time, it will start deteriorating. But my, my uh, now my intention is to understand the deteriorated capability, which we call it as the performance. But for that, I don't have time to wait for six months or six years, right on day one, I would like to understand what will be my performance just by collecting some data today. All of it, you understand the context? If you wait, if you are ready to wait till six months, then you can you can start observing the performance. But on day one itself, I would like to get a measure of the capability as well as the performance. Is it possible? Yes, it is possible with the help of inferential statistics. With the help of inferential statistics. Because what is inferential statistics? It will help you to predict. If you predict anything, that is inferential. If you simply understand something, that is known as descriptive. You understand the present or you understand the known things with the help of data, then it is descriptive. If you try to understand the unknown uh, characteristics uh, or, or otherwise you are uh, predicting the future, then it is known as inferential. So, even though you have some limitation, you have only three hours of time. So, within the three hours of time, will I be able to get an estimate of my performance? Yes, it is possible if you know how to use data. All of you agree with me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But the point is, 
the limitations in your data will obviously create limitations in your estimation right if you have a limitation in your data obviously your understanding on the performance will also have some limitation you should know the limitation and then decide you should always any prediction comes with certain limitation this is what we call it you know the confidence level confidence limits this is what we call it as confidence level and confidence limits according to the data i am 95% confident that this will be the performance and the performance can vary from this value to some other value that limit also you give right because it depends on the quality of the data and now in order to measure the performance if you are interested in measuring the performance the tool you need to understand is pp and ppk the earlier one was cp and cpk look at the formula formula wise they look same you can see here usl minus lsl divided by 6 times sigma what you can note here is the sigma is written as overall sigma can you see that can you note that all of you earlier we have only written sigma actually that sigma what we already used while discussing about cpcpk was sigma within was sigma within don't use that within sigma you must try to use the overall sigma so it's very important to understand the difference between within sigma and overall sigma. If you understand that, use within sigma and measure capability. Use overall sigma and then measure performance. Things will become much easier. You're not supposed to use the within standard deviation if you are interested in understanding your performance or if you are interested in understanding your long-term capability. But if you are interested in looking at your short-term capability, you can use within sigma. Now, what is this within and between? Now, consider your own batch, the Blackbird batch. What is the batch number all of you are in? 36. 36. 36. I can always measure our capability so, by looking at, you know, the data of batch number 36 alone. Am I correct? I can simply use the data of batch number 36 and try to understand our capability, current capability. If I want to know my current capability, I will only look at your marks. But if I want to understand our performance over a longer term, should I use only your marks or should I use all the 36 batches which we conducted you know, in the last one year? Come on. All batches we have to. If I use all batches, that can be a real indicator of how we are performing. If I use only your batch mark, that's an indicator of <laughs> our current capability. Can you understand all of you? So, there are 40 people here in this batch. This 40 people exam performance will have an average. This 40 people exam performance will have a standard deviation. Correct? If you all write the exam, I will get 40 data point. I want to use only this 40 data point. And now I calculate average. I calculate standard deviation. And now this standard deviation is known as within standard deviation. Because the data represents only a particular batch, which is batch number 36. What is this standard deviation known as? Within, within standard deviation. Standard deviation. The within standard deviation can only explain the variation that is happening only for a particular batch. That is known as within standard deviation. Now there is one more way I can try to understand how we are performing. I have all my students' test mark already tabulated in an Excel. First batch is also available. Second batch also available. Even the 36th batch also available. In one year time, can you imagine the various possibility of variation. Trainers, there are different trainers conducted the training program. Am I right? Yes. And uh, various different category of uh, participants have attended the training program. And the internet connectivity can be at different level for different batches. 
Am I right? Yes. No. There are many, many challenges. This batch, the attendance rate was, you know, somewhat better. But in certain batches, the previous batches, even the attendance could have been, attendance of the participants could have been a big trouble. Can you understand the sources of variations are many when I consider a longer term? Am I right? Yes. That means if I combine all the data, if I combine the test mark of all the 36 batches and type it in a single column, if I calculate the standard deviation now, do you think this standard deviation will be equal to the standard deviation of the 36th batch? Yes, sir. Will it be same or different? Different, different. Different, different, different only. Certainly Slightly different. different, sir. You all know the reason why it is different, isn't it? Yes. Because the trainers are different. <coughs> More variations. Trainers are different. And uh, there are many things that can go different. This is called variation. Always long-term variation will be higher than the short-term variation. Hope all of you agree. Within one batch, we can, have, we can have a good control. Probably I can take all sessions and then, you know, arrest one factor, which is, you know, the variation due to the trainer. I can arrest. But in a longer term, it is not possible. I can't sit always, you know, uh, for this. I probably, you know, may have to attend to other activities. All right. So that standard deviation of the overall standard deviation will be quite different from the within standard deviation. Now, I want you to guide me. Will that standard deviation be higher than the within standard deviation or lower than the within standard deviation? Come on. Higher than that. Higher, sir. Overall standard deviation will definitely have a value, right? Larger than the within standard deviation. As the standard deviation is increasing, look at your position of the standard deviation. That is in the denominator, isn't it? If the standard deviation increases, what will happen to your indi uh, index, the PP? That will go down. Can you understand? Yes, sir. So always the PP and PPK will be lower than your CP and CP. PP and PPK will be lower than the CP and CPK. Now, as a, as a leader, you should not only focus on your short-term capability or short-term performance. You should also focus on long-term performance. So, whenever you are looking at CP and CPK, also look at the PP and PPK. You both are almost same. That means you have developed a process in a way that it can even perform better in the long run. But if CP and CPK and PP and PPK are now far away from each other, that is not a good sign if you are looking at long-term performance. Hope all of you understand the purpose of introducing the new tool PP and PPK. Clear? Otherwise, they are same. Formula-wise, they are same. This, the difference is in the standard deviation. Right? So I use overall, then it becomes PP and PPK. I use within, then it becomes CP and CPK. With one example case study, we will understand how to use the CP and CPK as well as PP and PPK. Otherwise, they are same. You see here, PP upper, PP lower. Earlier, we called it, called it as CP upper and CP lower. Hope so far is good, right? Clear? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. See here, there is process you are running and uh, your process is running like this the dotted line can you see that the dotted line is how your process is running but but the PP, when i calculate pp and ppk the pp and ppk are smaller compared to the cp and cpk that is giving me a clue that in a long run my process spread can be much more higher than what i'm seeing currently and so the red color curve is also drawn. You can see here, the red color curve. According to the data, your data represents, the histogram is like dotted line only. But understanding the overall standard deviation, you are drawing one more, one more uh, red color curve. This indicates the long-term performance and you can easily understand the spread is more than the dotted one, right? And that means rejections can be higher than what we are currently experiencing. So capability, 
depends on the variation as well as the position of the process center. You have to control the center of the process and you have to control the variation. If you, any point of time, if you lose your control on the center, then capability will get destroyed. If you lose your control on the variation, then also capability will be lost. So it depends on two things. And now this capability can be divided into two. One is short-term capability, nothing but CP and CPK. The other one is long-term capability, which is PP and PPK. And, in, and within the short-term capability, there are three categories, but I don't want to confuse you a lot. Let us, you know, let us only ha and try to understand the short-term capability CPCPK and the long-term capability PPPPK. So let us consider one of the standard deviation used to calculate short-term capability, which is sigma within. Now coming to the other side, PP and PPK, which is sigma overall. There are two more types of standard deviation. If you need to understand this, please come to me at that point of time. I will definitely, I'm ready to guide you. If you are working on a project, yes, you want to, your company is talking about the sigma between or the sigma combined. Yes, we can talk on that. But right now, sigma within and sigma overall. Sigma within will give you within capability. But sigma overall will give you overall capability, right? So that's the point. So now, another important thing you all must understand is if your process is not in statistical control i have a question to all of you will you conduct capability study if your process is not in statistical control you all know what is statistical control right in your control chart if there are abnormalities then your process is considered to be out of control if there are no abnormalities that means all the points are inside the control limit your process is running normal. Your process is under statistical control. Please tell me, if your process is statistically out of control, will you still be interested in conducting the capability analysis? Or is it a good idea to conduct capability analysis no. if no. the process is out of control? No, no. No. No, sir. No, no. no. I, I appreciate this answer. Yes, that is correct answer. But can you tell me why are we why are we not supposed to conduct capability analysis if the process is out of control? Any any logic? Why why it is not advisable to go for the capability study if the process is out of control? That is the performance is not good. And why? Time consuming and cost will be there. Time consuming and cost is more. Imagine will not be the accurate value. Upper and the lower will not be defined. Our weakness will be known to competitors or darkness. Reason will be known to known to uh, organization or to the competitors. The performance <laughs> is not good, then uh, no point of uh, to uh, analyze the capable. Wow, fantastic. I think we all must clap for this answer to Sandil. Right? We already know there are a lot of problems, isn't it? He's very, he's to the point. We already know there are problems. We already know there are limitations. Without overcoming the limitation, why do you want to measure your capability? It's a good question. Agreed, all of you? Yes. Imagine, yes. imagine you don't have proper machineries, you don't have sufficient team member, and people are not motivated. You know all these problems. What will be the capability? Capability will be bad, isn't it? Will be poor. And instead of conducting the capability study, capability analysis, you please focus on stabilization. Am I right? Your results cannot be stable with the known problem. All of you agree? Your results cannot be stable if you live with known problems. Am I right? Yes. Imagine in yes, your sir. imagine in your kitchen, always few ingredients are missing. Every day, you, the, there will be a problem with your food. Yes. There is no point of blaming your wife. Isn't it? You are not providing the ingredients, but you only find problems. The point here is, if your control chart is not in control, if your control chart is not in control, it is not advisable 
to conduct capability analysis many people don't know this they always you know blindly look at cpcpk blindly look at pppk it is as good as finding problems with your wife but the problem is with you you think that your wife cannot cook a good meal but problem is you are not providing her the right ingredients can you understand all of you yes we could not do situation will become much worse if you take actions agree yes sir so what should you do now if the similar situation exists in your family what are you supposed to do first would you like to find problem with your cook or with your wife or mother who is cooking or would you like to make sure the ingredients are provided which is the input, first thing you should do input input to, into control and to standardize the process all the ingredients has to be provided first then even after that if there is a problem with the quality of the meal then you can start blaming isn't it it is clearly because of the skill of the cook involved same manner if they if the control chart itself is struggling that means there are some special causes already disturbing your process without arresting such special causes you cannot no you cannot conduct capability analysis please arrest all of those special causes and then control chart will come to control then only you should conduct capability analysis so the answer here is even cpcpk should not be calculated as well as the pppk should not be calculated whenever the control chart is out of control all of you understand one important principle here yes sir or you are yes, violating this principle please note you are doing something against a yeah, known principle and so your decision will have a lot of limitation you need to know that and then do do it in your company because i know in your company they may not understand all of this they might ask you to give you the cpcpk isn't it they'll ask you in the morning and then evening you have to give the report you don't have a chance to check whether your process is under control or out of control and all of this but you may have a data you may have a control chart and you may know the process is out of control but your boss needs the capability report how will you react now will you go and say sir it is this is not possible right now to give you the report you wait for another you know two weeks can you say like that sir we still uh, prepare the report and uh, as a disclaimer mention that because the process is not in control this numbers may not be perfect yeah, may not be realistic yes. correct may not be a may not be a realistic value but only for reference purpose it can be used all of you can you understand the limitation the capability report whatever you are generating the cpcpk value pppk value whatever you are calculating that can be only used as a reference am i correct yes sir yes sir yes sir please know this limitation that is why it is important to monitor any process you know using a control chart and make sure you know the control chart is under statistical control and so whatever capability analysis you conduct that can be a real indicator of your capability real indicator of your performance but please note this knowledge i am giving you only for using it in an internal purpose you don't have to you know uh, tell to the external customers hope i know all of you know use this tool in a diplomatic manner am i right if your customer is asking you a capability report he is asking you cpcpk and pppk will you will you will you tell them that sir our control chart are out of control so no uh, that will you know spoiling your business you should not do that so you have yes. the data the data has normal points as well as abnormal points all of you are able to follow me you have data your data has the normal points also and the abnormal points also now your customer is asking a capability report now how can you do it do you want to include the abnormalities also or do you want to exclude the abnormalities exclude the abnormality you exclude the abnormalities 
calculate the capability measures, performance measures, and then you can send it to your customer. But what is the limitation or what is the you know, uh, condition you need to fulfill? There should not be any abnormalities in the process, isn't it? Yes. If there are no abnormalities, if the special causes are removed, now this will be my CPCPK and PPPPK. So you should know always what are you doing with the data. But if the process is under clear control, no out of control points, then it's a beautiful scenario. You conduct the capability analysis, calculate the CPCPK, calculate the PPPPK, send it to your customer with all confidence. If customer suddenly visit next day for a surprise visit, surprise, surprise audit, he will definitely be happy about you know the report you have submitted. Am I right? Yes, sir. Because you have shared a real report, the exact capability you have shared, he can come and do the audit anytime. Naturally, the results are happening in your process. You don't have to worry or you don't have to do anything artificially to bring the result. Any point of time, if the client visits and collects some sample and he will be happy about your process. All of you understand? Yes. Yes, sir. Only your yes and no can be an indicator for me. Right? Or yes, your, your non-verbal communication. Yes, sir. Looking at your face, yes, I can understand. Whether you are following or understanding everything and speaking or not. Right? So, if your face is bright, yes, I could understand you really become bright. Right? But uh, for me, everything is, you know, dark right now. I could see only a black screen and your name. Your name with the black screen began. I don't know the meaning of it, right? So, this is the point. So, CPC began, then PPP began. And, uh, and also, uh, we always give the CPC began along with the PPP began. But if your company really you know, uh, limits the focus only to particular thing, let's say CP and CPK, your company is not at all talking about PP and PPK. That means they are not aware of the PP and PPK. Am I right? In some companies, they only talk about CPCPK. Or some of your client, they only talk about CP and CPK. In that case, it is better not to you know, discuss anything about PP and PPK. Am I correct? Because the customer itself is you know, not aware of PP and PPK. Like for example, last week, we did not talk anything about PP and PPK. Isn't it? Yes, sir. Same logic yes. is to it. Just because you know several tools, don't try to use all of them. That may lead to unnecessary confusion. Right? If people are trained enough, if they if they are really you know, fit enough to interact with you, they are speaking your language, then it's a good time for you to respond. Otherwise, you limit your discussion only to the requirement. They need CPCPK. Yes, you give it. But I have seen many companies, you know, mixing up things. They call CPCPK as performance and they call PPPPK as capability. And these are all, you know, unnecessary confusions, right? You should not be of one such category. All right. So now you understood when to conduct the capability study. The requirement is the process must be under clear statistical control. Means your control chart should have all points always inside the control limit. Then only the process is ready for capability study. All right. Now we are going to do a small case study. Imagine there is a company which is producing some product where the thickness of the material is very, very important. Please note, always people say, sir, all examples are manufacturing examples. You can make it as an example from a service industry also. You change the CTQ, that's all right. Let's say the refund must be processed within 50 minutes. Now all the data represents the time taken to complete the refund process. Am I right? Transaction time. Transaction. That's all right. Because in service industry, most of the time the CTQ is time. Right? Based on the time only. Or sometimes it can be the number of tickets. Or it can be you know, the resolution time. So don't worry about the application part. You must have a clarity on the CTQ. If CTQ is clear, you can work in any industry. 
So right now it is known as coating thickness. Requirement is 50 micron. Requirement is 50 micron. And customer always give a tolerance. 50 microns plus or minus 3 is acceptable. So what is the upper specification? 53. The lower specification is 47. 47. Now the raw material is coming to your factory in the form of a big roll. The raw material is coming to a factory in the form of a big roll. You can process the order roll by roll. Like how we are conducting the training batch by batch. Am I right? We are conducting the training batch by batch. People are coming in that manner only. Every month one batch. Same manner for you the raw material coming in the form of rolls. Roll. roll by roll you are producing the product. I mean I have the component and applying some coating and the coating has to be 50 mm. So first roll you are able to produce 5,000 pieces. First to roll, you are able to produce 5,000 pieces. Once the roll is completed, you are supposed to dispatch it to your client. This is the situation. So, you wanted to ensure the quality of the items are acceptable. So, what you do is, after the roll is completed, the quality inspector is going for a quality checking. He randomly picks three items. He randomly picks three items and he is checking the quality. Based on the three, he is making a decision whether he can permit the dispatch or the dispatch should be withheld. All of you understand? This is how you will also be working, right? The yes. item is for dispatch. It is in the pack, it is, you know, it is in the packing. And now you are checking. And how many items you take? Three. That means your sample size is three or otherwise your subgroup size is three. Because at a time you are taking three sample because always multiple samples helps in better prediction. So you take three sample and check certain things with respect to the three sample. If all the three are good, then you allow the dispatch. Otherwise you will not allow. So same manner for every role, the inspection is happening. Now 25 roles have been completed. Now 25 times the sampling is done. Now, 25 times the sample is collected. Every time, three sample is collected. That means there are 25 subgroups of data. And inside each subgroup, there are three samples. Can you see that, all of you? Yes. Now yes, I want sir. to know whether this process is enough. Uh, having the required capability and having the required performance. And now with the 25 roles completed, I have collected the data. Please note all of you, when it comes to the data collection, data collection period, as well as the quantum of data, always the rule is more is better. Always the rule is more is better. Mm -hmm. If you ask me, sir, instead of three sample, can I take five sample? Yes. I, yes. yes. Because yes. why is a better predictor than 3. Sir, why 25 subgroup? Can I go for 50 subgroup? That yes. will be a much better predictor because statistics is prediction. More is better. More the data and better is the prediction. And so, but right now, we have, this is only, this is possible. 25 subgroups and 3 samples each. And so, totally, there are 75 data points. Can you see that all of you? Yes, yes sir. sir. You yes, have sir. 75 data in your hand. With this 75 data, you want to understand whether your process is capable. As well as, you also want to understand whether this process can produce defect-free items even in the long run. These are the two questions you want to understand. One is you want to understand whether the item you know, can uh, produce defect-free items in the current time. As well as you also want to know whether the same process can produce defect-free items considering a long term also, right? So the 25, 3, 75 is understood. Now for every subgroup, I want you to calculate a statistics known as subgroup range. Range. Subgroup range. How many subgroup? 25. 25. So you will have 
25 subgroup range. R1, R2, up to R25. Now the range can be converted into standard deviation. Because range is a measure of variation. Standard deviation is also a measure of variation. Variance is also a measure of variation. We already know there is a connection between variance and standard deviation. What is the connection between variance and standard deviation mathematically? Square root variance is the square root of. Uh, Come on. Variance is LG squared. Variance is square of standard deviation. Yes. Yes. Very good understanding. When I square the standard deviation, I get variance. This is the mathematical relationship between variance and standard deviation. And for uh, standard deviation and range also, there is a mathematical relationship. But that relationship will be true only when you have some sufficient number of data. Right? Only when the uh, data is sufficient, that is true. So, what is that uh, relationship? Factor. That relationship is standard deviation is equal to R bar. R bar divided by D2. R bar divided by D2. So, what is this R bar? What is this D2? We are going to understand. So, now see here, we have the formula. See here, R bar divided by D2. What is R bar? Average of the 25 ranges you have. Can you see here? R1, R2, R3, up to R25 divided by 25. Can I call it as R bar? Mm -hmm. Yes. Average. This is R bar. This is R bar. So, R bar is calculated. Now, what is this D2? D2 is a control chart constant. D2 is a control chart constant that depends on subgroup size. What is your subgroup size? 25. Subgroup size is not 20. 3. Subgroup size is 3. Number of subgroups is 25. 20. So, subgroup size is 3. See here, sample size or subgroup size. That is 3. What is the value of D2? 1.693. Yeah. So, you have to use that 1.693. Now, you substitute here. R bar, you have here. D2, you have here. You divide it and the result is 0.4139. All of you understand how this 0 0.4139 is calculated? Yes. Yes, sir. Please use this standard deviation. This standard deviation is known as within standard deviation. If you use this value in your formula, you will get CP, CPK. You see here, CP is how much? 2.46. CPK is how much? 2.37. Now I ask you a question. Is your process capable? Is your process capable? No. Oh. No, I'm only asking you capability and CPCPK are given. So, when will you say your process is capable? What is the condition? You understood already. CP is more than 1. More than 1.67. We have taught you. 1.67 is the ideal. Ideal. Can you, can you maintain your salary and expense as same? 1 lakh salary and 1, man, 1 lakh monthly expense. Is it okay for you? No. Never okay. That is the situation equal to CP equal to 1. So, CP equal to 1 is not enough in any company. It should be more than 1. At least 1.33. And for critical process, it should be 1.67. So, look here. Both your CP, CPK are more than 1.67. I am asking a simple question. Is this process capable? Capable. 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 Conditions are fulfilled. The industry norms is fulfilled. The requirement is 1.67. We are way ahead of it. Right? It is very, very clear. But still I have a concern. I want to now go on an official trip for six months. I want to go on an official trip for, for six months. Do you think this process will run Problem free for next six months. You have to take a call, isn't it? Suppose you want to go for an outing with your family for next three months. You will be definitely worried about your, you know, the results during the six months. Yes or no? 
all yes. right so yes. to take a decision or to understand your long term performance you can calculate something known as pp and ppk in order to calculate pp and ppk sigma between is there in between i want you to leave it for a while sigma combined is there please leave it for a while you can learn about it little later to minimize you know the complication now come to the overall standard deviation overall standard deviation how should how can i calculate very simple totally you have 75 data points you can see here in the previous slide can you see 75 data yes sir please type all the data in a single column and then calculate the standard deviation using excel or using your mathematical formula now the resulting value is how much can you see here 0.8384 what was the standard deviation you earlier calculated 0.4 but now it is 0.8 can you see your standard deviation doubling in overall am i right yes that means problems can or multiple problems can get doubled in a long run as a result look at your pp and ppk look at your pp and ppk the industry requirement is pp and ppk should also be above 1.67 clients who are intelligent enough they will demand for pp and ppk am i right if you want to collaborate with a vendor you know or uh, some other uh, subcontracting company right now tell me would you, do you like to have your collaborator have a better cpcpk or better pppk better pppk the simple reason is you want to work with them in a long run yes or no yes yes if you simply look at their cpcpk and if you are happy about it and then immediately signed the contract then they may send all nonsense maybe within another 3 months time if you really wanted to prevent all of this you must demand a pppk and not just cpcpk hope all of you understand how to calculate cpcpk as well as pppk and more importantly how to use them and when to use cpcpk when to use pppk can you please answer what is your uh, understanding now are you good now with respect to cpcpk and the pppk and but these two things you can we, we will talk little later right what is that between capability and uh, combined capability no we will talk little later only within and then the overall within is known as cpcpk overall is known as pppk all of you are you are you good now in terms of conducting the capability study and when to use which please confirm yes yes sir yes sir so even uh, i am not happy with the statement i have given here but it is like you know uh, consoling uh, the uh, person during a difficult time that we have only have given the uh, statement but the statement is theoretically wrong what is that i have written process is not in statistical control and what is the recommendation i have given look at pppk but that is that is even you know uh, strictly speaking that is not correct because our what is our understanding if the process is out of control we are not even supposed to conduct the capability study that is the that is the correct guideline correct recommendation but if there is no option at least the pppk because we know pppk can can be you know better indicator of the long term performance so that has more uh, potential to predict the future than cpcpk so at least look at the pppk and then you know automatically because pppk can never be more than cpcp earlier i told you cpk can never be more than cp but now i am telling you the pp and ppk cannot be more than cp and cpk in a best scenario 
at the maximum cpcpk can be just equal to pppk or pppk can, can be just equal to cpcpk and now see here this is the minitab report can you see the numbers cpc pppk 1.19 1.15 cp 2.46 cpk 2.37 can you see something here bracket what is written within potential within overall so overall capability within capability now now the z value is nothing but sigma level sigma level is 3.3 here look here when the cpcpk is much more uh, more than 2 our sigma level is more than 6 you can see that here now also uh, see here this is your upper spec 53 lower spec is 47. 47 in short term absolutely there is zero rejection can you see here because the complete curve is well inside the spec can you see all yes. of this yes sir the same process if you run it for a longer term then you can see a small portion of the curve stretching beyond the lsl that means rejections will start happening at the lsl side usl side also there is a chance can you understand all of you can you understand this yes sir yeah so when i look at the red color curve referring to pp and ppk but according to the current data when i look at the dotted line i am referring to cp and cpk okay. you should always know which curve you want to refer to if you want to refer to the dotted line look at the cp cpk you want to refer to the red color line red color curve you must refer to the pp ppk <laughs> value and then take your decision all right so now the same thing is uh, same thing is again uh, done but now uh, one minute yeah now you see here the dotted line and the red color line are close to each other simply because why they are close to each other earlier the dotted line was representing within capability am i right mm. yes sir. now the dotted line is representing something known as b by w capability you know what is b by w capability b it means b means between w means within that means it is a combination of within capability and between capability and that's why you know the curves are close to each other earlier case they are far away you can see here but the, the limitation here here now is right now is we have not talked about between am i right i did not teach you the between standard deviation am i right you see here yes and also i don't want to complicate your understanding that's why i'm leaving it but definitely when when a need arises you can come to me see here within and then combined the combined is nothing but v by w I, I can I can combine the between and within and I get combined and as a result that is between. So uh, rarely companies uh, use that. So right now you can leave it for a while. So now there is no much difference. But see here, observation as far as the observation is concerned, I am not seeing any of the product outside the upper spec or below the lower spec i don't see any any item rejected but still i am predicting that my ppm can be 293 on the left side my ppm can be 100 on the right side my overall ppm can be 393 in a long term can you understand all of you why there are rejections here 393 simply because simply because in a long run Rejections will happen because my PPPPK are down. You can see here. My PPPPK are down. So I must anticipate failure in the future. So how many items might fail? So it is estimated that your PPM will be 394. I hope all of you know the meaning of PPM. Parts per million. Right now there is no rejection. But my PPM can be 394 in the long run. That is the point. Hope it is understood by all of you. Yes, sir. All right, so, so I'm saying that when the process is statistically out of control, 
I am uh, my recommend uh, the best one is PPPPK in that scenario. But however, you must focus on stabilizing the process. Now look at my slide and tell me: Is this process under statistical control? Is this process under statistical control or out of control? Out of control. Out of control. Out of control. Out of control. So, in this with this condition, can we conduct capability study? Yes, sir. No. 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 So what we need to actually do is we need to actually improve on the process. Stable. Try to stabilize the result. Don't worry about, don't talk about, talk about your capability, rather try to stabilize the result. And once you are able to see all the points inside the control limit, then you calculate the CPCPK as well as the PPK and then try to infer, right? But if there is an urgency, you have to do it, then probably you have to remove all the red color points and then calculate, but you should know what are you doing. You should know what are you doing. The assumption is, no out of control points. If there are no out of control points, then the CPCPK will be this much, PPPPK will be this much, but subject to the assumption, what is the assumption? No out of control points. Yeah, no right? control. That's how you should do. So don't even follow uh, my recommendation here. I have suggested PPPPK, but you know when to do, what to do exactly, right? All right, so let's, okay, this we will, uh, now let us do this ourselves, right? Uh, not this thing. So I'll show you how can we conduct this capability study in Minitab. All of you, do you have a Minitab? No, yes, sir. sir. Yeah, please open your Minitab. Also open your Excel file. I want you to work parallelly. So... Open the Excel file as well as open the Minitab file, right? Both you need to open. Excel file, which which one we have to open, sir? A sigma level calculator. I have given one file, you know, sigma level calculator V6. Yes, uh, sir. Open that file, one side. Open your Minitab, other side. Now we are preparing you. Sir, the sigma level calculator, that Excel file is showing corrupted for me, sir. Could you please share it again? It is there in the WhatsApp group, madam. You can re-download now. That is also one way you can manage. Let me try. Document. I just sent it. Oh, you have sent it, right? Great. Madam, you can check. Got it? I am halfway searching the Excel file. Okay. I have posted in the WhatsApp group. All right. So let me share my Sigma level calculator. All of you, can you see my Sigma level calculator, Excel file? Can you see? Yes, sir. Now, CPC, not this. I should go to a place where a similar case study is available. Let me check. Can you see coating thickness? Yes, sir. So first, what you need to do is you type your data in the Excel file. So how many data you have? 75 data. All right? Yes. And, sir. and the next column, we are indicating the roll number. There are 25 rolls. That also we are indicating, same data. Now for every three, every three is known as subgroup number one. Now for the subgroup, can you calculate average? All of you, do you follow me? Maybe yes, sir. Yeah, so 
you uh -huh. calculate average for each of the subgroup also calculate the range for each of the subgroup what is the range the maximum out of the three which is the maximum out of the three here 50 point 50.40 and the minimum is 50.14 the difference between the two is written here i have used a formula because the same formula you can see in your excel file i already said that's it now the subgroup range huh? is calculated all the 25 subgroups the subgroup range is calculated for all the 25 subgroups now what is this average of the range range average of the range that means what is this this is nothing but r bar average of range ah we all know r bar must be divided by d2 so the r bar is r bar divided by d2 is giving me 0. 0.41 if i use this 0. 0.41 and I know the formula for CP, CP, okay? you all know. What is the formula for CP? USL uh, minus USL, USL minus USL, USL by uh, sigma. Not sigma, six sigma. Sigma, six, 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 sigma. Six, 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 sigma. Six sigma. But that sigma should be 0. 0.41. So you get CP, CP game. See here, CP, CP game has come. Similarly, in order to get the PP, PP game, you should not use the sigma within instead you must use overall sigma what is overall sigma see here 70 by data available here now for 70 by data you can calculate average you can calculate standard deviation let me show you how you can calculate the overall standard deviation standard deviation dot s now you click this and then you go up to this close the bracket you enter what is the value you are getting 0.83, right? 0.83. If you use this 0.83, now the PPPPK will come here. 1.19. Formula is again same. USL minus LSL divided by 6 sigma. 6 sigma. So now the same problem. I want to do it in minute time. Now Excel method, all of you understood? Yes, sir. Now I copy this data. Huh? Copy this. Huh? And then I should take you to Minitab. So you all have to do it now, right? I mean, once I complete. Randomly, I'll call one of you and then you have to share the screen and do it. So now, I have opened the Minitab. I'm pasting my data here. I have pasted. Now, in Minitab, how can I do it? Go to Stat. Just a minute. Go to stat, go to quality tools, go to capability analysis, normal capability. Capability analysis, normal. normal. I click this. Now, where is my data? My data is available in single column and that column is C1. I select that. And subgroup size. Subgroup size is 3. And now Minidev is asking lower specification. What is your lower spec? 47. 47. Upper spec 53. After giving all this, I'll give OK. And so the report is ready. Can you see the report, all of you? Yes, sir. Yes. The same thing you need to do. You can right click, you can copy the graph, and then present it to your sponsor or present it to your management. You can send the graph directly to the Word document, which you are parallelly keeping open. You can send it to the PowerPoint, which you are barely keeping open. If I give it, the graph will go to my PowerPoint, right? So now, you remember I have told you one principle. Before conducting the capability, your process must be under statistical control. Am I right? Yes, yes sir. Let us check whether this process is under statistical control. Now, in order to check, tell me, what is the data type? You Only when you plot control chart, you know... Only when you plot control chart, you come to know whether pro process is under statistical control or not, isn't it? So, what is the control chart you should plot now? What is the data type? Continuous. Continuous data. Very good. Continuous. Coding thickness, and so data type is continuous. And what is your subgroup size? Three. 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 So, what is the control chart you should use now? X bar R. X bar R. Mm. Up to a subgroup size of 8. I mean, uh, 2, 2 to 8. 
the recommendation is x bar r chart so go to stat go to control chart go to variable chart for subgroup you can see x bar r here now data is available in a single column and that column is column one and the subgroup size is three and x bar r option the test i'm doing only one test which is whether the points are going outside control limit or not i give okay and i give okay now my control chart is like this tell me have we followed the principle correctly while conducting the capability study so, yes. no sir because uh, we have control, 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 control limits outside control limits outside the control there are so many complications in our process so even though we calculated cp cp k p p p p k your predictions cannot be accurate do you know do you understand the limitation now so, so ideally first i have to test this x bar r chart then only i want to go to that very good see plot in ensuring your process is under control is an uh, is an everyday activity yes or no yes sir if you are yes, not sir. controlling your process on a daily basis but monthly once you are conducting the capability study you are not Ready. for the position isn't it there has to be daily control thereby you are no capability can be assessed so that is the inference you are drawing here hope all of you understand yes. even though we got a very good cpcp ge we got a very good pppp ge still your quality control department is able to find out a lot of problems in your products have you ever seen this have you ever experienced this yes someone guys yes sir yes sir definitely you are maintaining a very good cpcp ge very good pppp ge but still your quality department is unhappy every day they are you know finding uh, the defect so many rejection rejections this is simply because of you deviating this principle what is this principle control chart must be under control before conducting the capability study if you don't do this don't follow this you know all the work you are doing you know are not realistic all of you understand sir sure. now you have to do it maybe all of you can you come on screen let me see whether you are feeling good after this learning this and hope all of you are ready with your mini tab right yes sir but still many people are not coming on video i want to see your bright faces now yeah now who who can do it because the data is given to you excel is also available with you mini tab is also available with you can one of you do it in mini tab you are allowed to share the screen and please do it sir i am ready to do it can i share yeah yeah please we want sir there is no mini tab you said we can also use the web version uh, can you please uh, show which us version? which version sir web version web version web version of uh, mini tab uh, net version uh, cloud version yes yes yes, yes. oh you uh, you have, not, have you created any account in the cloud uh not yet sir okay so that uh, we will take it up now let marudu bond to one state but that's an easy task you you have to create an account and then uh, you can open same thing oh you, you copy pasted right already oh yes sir copy and pasted very good oh are you sharing from computer or phone laptop sir yes. okay ah now it is better all right yes marudu you can uh, you can uh, go for the capability study straight away stat stat quality control quality tools yes in the capability analyze then normal, normal. your single column uh, single column you, yes. the column is, single column and you double click you can double click okay and the subgroup size is 3 3 Lower no no lower spec specification. You have to declare the specification. Forty seven, forty seven, fifty three. Forty seven, fifty three. 
ஒரேஷன் that should be the you know uh, ideal scenario yeah ideal scenario but if that is not happening it means you have violated a principle which is control chart should be under statistical control then only cpc bk and all of these will speak better hope you so know by, right? mm. so by default then we should be creating the control charts first and then cpc bk unless otherwise control chart is for. not first control chart you should uh, plot every day okay if you are a six sigma belt and you are responsible for uh, the quality of the product in a particular line you mm. need to have control chart maybe several control chart for each characteristics one control chart now what is the characteristics we are talking mm. about uh, yes sir porting uh, thickness porting thickness <laughs> Thickness. If this control chart is taken care, CPCPK is taken care, you will never face problem with respect to thickness. Similarly, there are other characteristics, isn't it? Customer is not going to leave you just by looking at thickness. He will check thickness. He will check length. He will check bore diameter. Am I right? Yes. You have to monitor, right? And now, Mardu, can you also plot the control chart, X bar R chart here? Or okay, you you finish. This one can I close it? Uh, with the same data only, you can plot control chart. You just click the Excel chart, uh, yeah, the spreadsheet. You click the spreadsheet, then it will come. Now, now plot the control chart. I have to open the Excel sheet, sir. No, 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 no. Here no, it is data is available. No, here ah, it is worksheet. It's available. Yeah, you go to stat. Stat. Now control chart. ऊपर कंट्रोल चार्ट कंट्रोल चार्ट कंट्रोल चार्ट ओके 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 वेरिएबल चार्ट फॉर सब ग्रुप एक्स बार एक्स बार आर एक्स बार आर हां हां करेक्ट 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 राइट हैंड साइड राइट हैंड साइड राइट ओके क्लिक कर सर हियर दिस वन सब ग्रुप साइज फर्स्ट यू सेलेक्ट द डेटा डेटा कंट्रोल सी ऑल ऑफ यू शुड डू दिस एट नो 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 No, no, no. Oh, All alteration for chart are not in one column. In that uh, white color ah, box. White you color click box. there. Click there. Ah, now you Ten. select. Double click. Now subgroup Ten. size. Three. Three. A condition is already safe. You can straight away give okay. Condition is always one condition only. But there are several condition you can add. Now you know how to plot control chart also, right? Yes, sir. So very good. Well done. Sir, All others. Is, sir, one is out of range. Another one is subsequent uh, three points are continuously flow on one direction. That is also problem. Hmm. See, I think uh, in control phase, Ravi Kumar has taught several things. Right. If you are uh, see, we applied only one condition. Now, uh, Marthu Pandey, you go to stat again. Go to stat. Go okay. to uh, control charts. Again, uh, okay, control okay. variable chart for subgroup. Again, X bar R chart. Okay, sir. X bar R chart. Now everything is perfect. Now go to X bar R option. X bar R option. Come down. Come down. Come down. Come down. The bottom. No, no, no. Everything no, no, okay. is. Okay. You come here. Yeah, the X, X bar R option. Option. Yeah. Like yeah. Now go to test. 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 now so many tests available you select all the test you you give the tick everywhere totally eight no sir yeah totally eight uh, no. but you can design your own test also the depending on your maturity you can design right now you give okay now one more okay okay Very, that means it is almost the same right yes sir 
almost the same so that means that uh, first test itself you know has revealed all of this you can understand 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 eight out of control points the previous graph can you click the other graph yeah you click that 1 2 3 mm -hmm. 4 so here there is no difference what do you understand only one particular condition is you know repeatedly not fulfilled what is that condition out of uh, control limit points out of control limit but you can always add additional condition depending on your understanding on the process depending on your understanding on the process always add see uh, for example right now for uh, the training program only one important condition we are checking you know what is that condition we are checking whether you are attending the training session or not am i right yes sir that means whether all of you are inside the training meeting i mean training session or not but there is always you know and another doubt even though you are inside the training hall i can still have a doubt are you paying attention here am i right yes sir even after uh, signing into the meeting you can still do something else on the other side same manner even though all the points are inside the control limit still there can be a special cause in control chart always we try to understand whether the deviation is due to common cause or due to special cause common cause means you don't have to do anything but special cause means you have to take action let us say while uh, conducting the training session one there is always a noise coming from one participant what does it mean does it mean he is carefully attending our session come on always there is a background noise coming from one particular participant he is inside the meeting now there is a lot of background noise what does it mean is he really listening to you no no this sir even though my point is inside the control limit i see something abnormal i still see something abnormal isn't it but how do we know that even after paying the fees even after coming into the training session still pe people you know cannot be uh, attentive possible isn't it i we could we could sense that control chart can give you such signals right so sometimes what happened continuously three four points move upwards but all the three four points are inside the control limit only now there is a trend you are seeing am i right all, continuously four points moving upwards if i don't react at this stage the fifth point will be out, out of out control. Out. so this kind of additional conditions you will be able to draft only after gaining enough maturity on the process right we know if there is a background noise if people are completely not coming on video throughout the day these are all some abnormalities we know isn't it can lead to you know poor competency yes or no if yes. there is a participant not now now we have a master black belt program our mbb program or 100% video on session the moment we say 100% video on session one candidate not at all joining the meeting we don't know right so so that so that means the additional conditions you can draft the additional conditions you can draft based on the requirement and based on your understanding on the process right so now all the eight conditions if you look at or nine condition or you can introduce a tenth condition all of this you can do but one more thing is not only understanding on the process your understanding on the normal distribution your understanding on the normal distribution what is your understanding on the normal distribution 99.73 percentage of the points are expected to be inside control limit that is your understanding that is why you expect all the points inside the control limit there is warning limit you know what is warning limit to just draw another line slightly below the control limit which is known as two sigma line warning limit 
you can expect 95 percentage of the points fall between the warning limit. inside warning limit so five percentage of your points can be between warning limit and control limit am i right yes sir yes sir five percentage is one out of 20 Five percentage is one out of twenty. Out of twenty points, one point can be between warning limit and control limit. Out of twenty points, am I right? Yes, sir. Yes, so yes, at the below two sigma line, there can be one sigma line. You all know what is one sigma line I am talking about, right? One standard deviation above the center, one sigma line. The normal distribution rule is sixty-eight percentage of the points should appear should appear inside one sigma line. If all the points are appearing inside one sigma line, that is also abnormal, isn't it? Imagine I conduct an exam. The average mark is 85. And I see that all the students have scored the same mark. Can it be an abnormality? Everybody got exactly 87 marks. Can it be an abnormality? Yes. Yes. It can be. Yes. Abnormality. Something wrong is possible. How come all the students get 87 exactly? Isn't it? Or everybody between a small gap, 85 to 87? Isn't it possible, right? Yes. That means yes. question papers are same. Everybody copied from each other. And so all the marks are close to each other. Isn't it? Yes, sir. So now yes, sir. You, can, you can, you know, tune your process better. Now all the participants will get a different question paper. Isn't it? So this is called you know, process understanding. Hope it helped, right? So the process capability yeah. analysis, how to do, 